Bienvenue à Coffee Break French. Welcome to the Coffee Break French Show. Moi, c'est Marc. Et moi, c'est Pierre-Benoît. Comment vas-tu bah, Très, très bien. Et toi Très bien. Très content d'être ici et très content que tu sois ici avec nous. Merci beaucoup. Et merci pour ce petit subjonctif. <laughs> We've done many episodes of Coffee Break French together, but this is the first time that you're here with us, well, with me, for mm -hmm. our first Coffee Break French Show together. Yeah. And what is the Coffee Break French Show Well, in these weekly episodes, we try to help you improve your French one coffee break at the time. Absolutely. And if you notice these beautiful Coffee Break French mugs, if you'd like your own, then there is a link underneath this video, or you can go to coffeebreakgiftshop.com. Anyway, this is a podcast. You can subscribe to our podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. Or if you're watching the video, then make sure you subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Pierre Benoit, what are we talking about today? Today, we're talking about the agreement of the past participle. Okay. All will become clear. Shall we get started? <laughs> On y va. So the agreement of the past participle sounds like quite a complex grammar, a grammatical concept, but it's not too difficult. No, if we start with the English, I have spoken, for example, mm -hmm. you've got your subject pronoun, you've mm -hmm. got your auxiliary, and you've got your past participle. Okay, so I have spoken. If we translated that into French, we need those three bits. Mm -hmm. I would be je, right. and then have, et, so that becomes je, and then spoken. Parler. Parler, and that's got an E acute because that's the past participle form. Exactly, for ER verbs. Yeah. So your ER verbs always end up in an E acute uh, when, you, when you use the past participle. So what would an IR verb be? For, for example, finir, I have finished. J'ai fini. So it would be just an I. Mm -hmm. okay. And what about, uh, let's think of an RE verb. I have sold, vendre. J'ai vendu. So, so that would be a U. A U, yeah. So we've got E acute for regular ER verbs. I for uh, IR verbs, and then you for RE verbs. So these are regular verbs. So this past participle, in each case, we've said j'ai parlé, j'ai vendu, j'ai fini, I have finished, I have spoken, I have sold. Uh, sold. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but there are some situations when that final word, that past participle, has to change. And one of the biggest groups of uh, situations is when we're not using avoir as our auxiliary verb. No, it's when we use our être auxiliary, yeah. to be. Yeah. So in French, while you might say, I have gone, we actually say, I am gone, in yes. a sense. Je suis allé. Je suis allé. That means I went or I have gone. Je suis allé. And with that allé, it depends who it is that's <laughs> gone as to whether we spell it with an extra E at the end or just that E acute. Yeah, depending on the person who's I. Mm -hmm. so if we have a female person, mm -hmm. then we'd be je suis allé with an extra E. Yeah. So, for example, Hélène est allée au supermarché. So, Helen went to the supermarket. And in that case, it would be A-L-L-E acute E. Exactement. So, we've got an agreement of the past participle that agrees with the subject, with the person who's doing the action. Hélène, in this case. Okay. But that's only with être. Yeah. Tout à fait. Tout à fait. And there are a number of uh, être verbs, a number of verbs that conjugate with être. Yeah, we tend to put them in a group of, uh, of movement verbs mm -hmm. or absence of movement. Indeed. So verbs like uh, entrer. Ou sortir. Yeah, so to go in or to go out. Then we've got aller, we've heard aller already. Oui, aller. Oh, okay, or retourner. Yeah, so <laughs> to go or to return. Monter. To go up. And then... Descendre. Descendre, to go down. <laughs> to go down. Downstairs, yeah. We've got arriver. Oui, and then the opposite would be partir, because you can use them as opposites as yeah, well when you think exactly, about it. Exactly, exactly. We've also got a couple that are a little more um, esoteric, shall ah, we say. Yeah. Naître and, et, et mourir, c'est ça? Yeah, naître and mourir. So, naître is to be born. Mm -hmm. Je suis né, I was born. And uh, uh, mourir, mourir, to die. To die yeah. So, il est mort, he died. Mm -hmm. And That's the like, other one. It's interesting as well for naître, because I was born, but actually in French we say I am born. I am born, yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Je suis né. And the other one that I was thinking about was tombé. Ah, je suis tombé, oui. I fell. So in each of these cases, these are être verbs, and être verbs need to, as we say, agree. They need to have that past participle which agrees with the, in, in number and gender, yeah, with, the subject, the subject. with the subject. Yeah, Très okay. bien. 
Would you like an example, Mark? Let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so if I wanted to say uh, the plane arrived or has arrived, mm -hmm. how would I say that? L'avion est arrivé. Très bien, how would you spell arrivé at the end? Well, avion is a masculine noun. So we simply write a double R I V E acute. There's no additional ending. L'avion est arrivé. Super. What about if it was l'ambulance? Uh, l'ambulance uh, is a feminine noun. In that une ambulance, situation, right? we would say l'ambulance est arrivé. Now the sound is the same, but the ending would be E acute E. Très bien. What about the plural? If okay. we go back to les to l'avion, they become les avions. Les avions. So what would change? So if it's les avions, we would have les avions sont arrivés. And that arrivé would be a double r i v e acute s, and if it were les ambulances, then we would have e acute e s at the end. Les ambulances sont arrivées. Again, it sounds the same, but we get that extra e s at the end. So that's yeah, that's that's a difference with the the gender, okay, and the plural. What about if it was a reflexive verb? Mm, okay. So, so if so. I gave you uh, Christophe s'est réveillé, I give you the French name. Okay, so Christophe s'est réveillé, he woke up. Um, and in that case, we're talking about Christophe, a masculine person. Christophe s'est réveillé, just an acute on the end. Très bien. If you've changed Christophe to Lucie. Lucie, uh, is she still waking up? Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Lucie s'est réveillé, and that would be e acute e at the end. Très, très bien. So we've had Christophe and Lucie. What about if they're together mm -hmm. and we're saying that they woke up? That would be Lucie and Christophe se sont réveillés because they woke up and uh, se sont réveillés, e acute s. We're using the masculine ending for the plural because there's a group of, well, it's a group involving both a masculine and a feminine person, basically. <laughs> yeah, so we end up with e acute s. Très bien. So, so far, so good, Mark. So far, so good. Let's do a quick recap so far. We have looked at avoir verbs and what happens with their past participles. So in most cases, they don't agree. They just keep the normal ending of the past participle in the perfect tense or the pluperfect tense or other compound tenses. Don't worry if pluperfect is new to you. We'll be covering that in another lesson. We've also looked at être verbs. And these are verbs, that a group of verbs normally involving some kind of motion or a change of state like being born or, or whatever. <laughs> um, and those ones do have uh, an agreement. The, the past participle does agree with the subject in gender and number. And we might need to add an extra E on the end for feminine or an extra S on the end for masculine plural or ES for feminine plural. And it works as well with reflexive verbs. Tout à fait, tout à fait. But there are a couple of things that we need to consider. I mentioned there that most of the time with avoir verbs, we've said that there is no agreement, that the past participle stays as it is. But there is one particular situation I'm thinking of. I can see that you know what I'm thinking, <laughs> that we've got a special rule. Yes, it's the preceding direct object rule. The preceding direct object rule. So... It, this is where things change, where we have got an agreement to consider with uh, with with the, the past participle. Yes, using the auxiliary avoir. Yeah. So everything shatters because this rule we had, oh, you don't agree with avoir. Mm -hmm. Just for that wee nuance mm -hmm. there, you need to agree. You yeah. need to, to change the ending of the past participle. And I think what is going to help is if we look at a series of examples and we're going to see what exactly happens. First of all, let's take a situation with a masculine singular noun. And we know that with a masculine singular noun, the chances are there's not going to be an agreement. No. So if I say, j'ai mangé un biscuit. Right, so you've got j, your j apostrophe mm -hmm. ei, I have, mm -hmm. and then manger, so yeah. with your er verb, you've got an e acute. Yeah. I ate or I have eaten a biscuit. Yeah, straightforward. Now, if we switch this around and start to talk about the biscuit, which I have eaten, then the biscuit, the direct object, precedes the, the verb. The, the, yeah, the, the whole verbal yeah. structure. So in this case, we say le biscuit que j'ai mangé. Très bien. And manger is still e acute because it goes back to uh, the biscuit mm -hmm. that was being eaten. Which is a masculine singular noun. Très bien. No. <laughs> yeah. What happens? <laughs> what happens if it wasn't a biscuit that I ate, but instead it was an apple? So there wouldn't be un biscuit, it would be une pomme. Une pomme. So Et I ate a pomme. Yeah, I ate a pomme. <laughs> I ate an apple. J'ai mangé une pomme. So manger there, still the same. It's still manger, M-A-N-G-E, acute. Right. No agreement. However, 
if we swap it around. Yeah, and we change the structure. Mm -hmm. Okay. La pomme que j'ai mangé. Uh -huh. And what happens there is that la pomme in the sentence is before the, the verbal structure. Mm -hmm. J'ai mangé. Yeah. So that's where suddenly we need to change the agreement. Yeah. We need to change the ending of the past participle. And it takes the extra E that we've come to expect with feminine singular nouns. Yeah, because it's got to agree not with the subject, but with, with the, the object. Exactly. Yeah, the preceding direct object. So, la pomme que j'ai mangé, il y a que E at the end. Très, très bien. Okay. And the same thing happens with plurals as well. So, if I didn't eat one biscuit, but ate two biscuits, j'ai mangé deux biscuits. Mm -hmm. Mangé, straightforward, no change, M-A-N-G-E acute. However... Preceding direct object rule, the two biscuits which I ate. Les deux biscuits que j'ai mangés. And how would we spell manger? Well, it's got to go back to the biscuit. So it's it's a plural mm -hmm. and it's masculine. So manger, il y a cute S. So les biscuits que j'ai mangés, il y a cute S. And finally, if I ate two apples, much healthier than the two biscuits. Uh, j'ai mangé deux pommes. Yeah, in that situation, absolutely stay the same. J'ai mangé deux pommes. But les deux pommes que j'ai mangé, les deux pommes que j'ai mangé, the two apples which I ate and mangé would be spelled. It sounds exactly the same, uh -huh. but it's spelled e acute e s. It's going to be yeah. feminine and plural. Super. So Referring to the object again. That's the preceding direct object rule, and it's an exception, if you like. It's one of the the clear exceptions. And it's it's really quite straightforward once you get used to it, this idea. It has to be the situation where it's the biscuit or the apple that I ate and so on. Yeah. As soon as you see that the object is is preceding mm -hmm. um, in a past part in a in a perfect, then you've got to make sure that you change your ending of your past participle if it needs mm -hmm. to be changed. Yep. No. There is another. There is a, another exception. It's the kind of opposite situation mm -hmm. where we see an être verb that looks like an être verb and normally does have an agreement, <laughs> but all of a sudden we use avoir with that verb and therefore there's no agreement. Do you see where I'm going here? Yes, I, I totally see where you're coming here. It's, it's because some infinitives, some verbs can use avoir or, or être. être. Mm -hmm. And you might be at a stage in your learning when you've been told, no, no, th those verbs use être and that's it. Yeah. But then again, we've got a wee nuance, a wee mm -hmm. exception. So if we take, for example, uh, I think monter. Monter. Mm -hmm. So monter means to go up. So we could say, je suis monté dans le bus, for Très example. Bien. So yeah. I got up onto the bus or je suis monté dans le train. Très bien. Very often a monter is used for getting on a type of transport, especially if you've got to kind of climb up to it. <laughs> yeah, but if you were moving house or something uh -huh. like that, or you were moving into a new house and you say, j'ai monté les cartons uh, dans la chambre. Yeah. In that situation, you're literally taking the boxes up to the bedroom and uh, the monter is a different type of verb. Okay, it's got an object this time. J'ai monté les cartons. I took the boxes upstairs. And the same would happen with the opposite when you're not going up, but you're going down. <laughs> J'ai descendu les cartons. J'ai descendu les cartons. So I brought the boxes down, but je suis descendu dans la cave. I went down into the cellar. Exactly. I think you use et when you refer to, it would be like referring to the person who's doing the action. Yeah. So je suis descendu, Rachel est descendu. Mm -hmm. But as you, you clearly said, if you've got an object, Right, that's when suddenly it changes it to changes. using the auxiliary avoir. Très bien. Okay. I think we are almost done, but perhaps we've got time for a couple of translations here. We can let our, our listeners try and work out what these would be. Um, tu es prêt pour un petit défi alors? Ah, peut-être. Peut <laughs> D'accord, mon premier exemple, tu es prêt? Vas-y. Her little sister came down, but did not want to eat. Okay, we're going to give you 10 <laughs> seconds to think about this. We'll play some music in the meantime. Have a think and see what you come up with and think very carefully about those agreements of past participles. Okay, so her little sister came down, presumably from upstairs. Yes. So what, which, what would you use as a, as a verb, as an infinitive there? Well, we're looking for that verb to come down, to, mm -hmm. to descend, mm -hmm. descendre. Descendre. And okay. it, what auxiliary does it use? Well, here we're talking about movement. Uh -huh. um, it, she didn't bring anything downstairs. No. She came down herself. Uh -huh. So we're talking about 
et descendu. Très bien, using the auxiliary être. Ouais. To be. Yep. So Attends. her little sister, sa petite sœur, est descendu, but did not want to eat. Très bien, so did not want. So okay. that's the verb vouloir. Uh -huh. It's an irregular verb with a past participle that is voulu. Très bien, but which auxiliary will you use? Well, here is vouloir that always uses avoir. Très bien. Unless there's some exception, but in this case, it's, it's, it's avoir. So, mais n'a pas voulu manger. Très, très bien. Très, très bien. Excellent. So Excellent. The whole thing would be... And it's quite nice. So, sa petite sœur est descendue, mais n'a pas voulu manger. And it's a lovely example, because you've got the auxiliary être and the auxiliary avoir. Tout à fait. Super. Let's do one more. Okay. Um, the story which I have told you is not true. And by the way, everything we've said... I mean, it's true. Totally, okay. totally true, yeah. <laughs> Toutes les choses que nous avons dites sont vraies. <laughs> so, the story which I have told you is not true. Ten seconds. Okay, so, the story which I have told you is not true. So, l'histoire. Très bien, elle est une histoire. Mm -hmm. Que je t'ai raconté, Très bien. that I to you have told, n'est pas vrai, is not true. Bravo. D'accord? Ouais, je suis d'accord avec toi. Ok, but how did you spell raconter yeah. again? How would you spell it? So it's the story which I have told you. I have told a story. J'ai raconté une histoire. Raconté, il est cute. Boom. However, l'histoire que je t'ai raconté, we've got a preceding direct object. L'histoire is the preceding direct object. L'histoire que je t'ai raconté, Raconter would be i acute i at the end. Bravo, bravo, because obviously we're talking about histoire and it's feminine, so we need that feminine ending. So in this episode, we've looked at the agreement of the past participle. We started looking at avoir verbs, where there isn't an agreement generally, and then we looked at être verbs, Très bien. where we have got an agreement, and with être verbs, the past participle has to add an extra e if it's feminine, an s if it's masculine plural, and an es if it's feminine plural. Yeah, we looked at a list of verbs, so we did. With, with movements or absence of movements. Mm -hmm. Okay, and also the reflexive verbs. Yeah, so reflexive verbs also taking être and therefore have uh, have agreements with them. But we also covered a couple of exceptions, and the first exception was where we've got the preceding direct object rule when the preceding direct object comes before the verb. So l'histoire que je t'ai raconté, and that that uh, past participle does have to have an agreement on it. Yeah, très très bien. And finally, we looked at verbs which can actually use either avoir or être. Yeah, huge revelation there. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, when they use avoir, there's no agreement, but when they use être, there is an agreement. Bravo. Not bad at all. Un bon résumé. So we hope that you've enjoyed this lesson. If you'd like more examples and to see all of these examples written down, then we have a blog article and you can find the link to the blog article in the description. And if you'd like more help with your French, we send regular free email lessons. Just visit coffeebreaklanguages.com slash French. And you can look out for that next mini lesson coming to your inbox very soon. Alors, Pierre-Benoît, c'est tout pour aujourd'hui. C'est tout pour aujourd'hui, mais j'espère que toutes ces règles que vous avez apprises vous ont plu. Oh, 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 that's lovely. Toutes ces règles que vous avez apprises, so a preceding direct object in there, and because appris to learn, we hope that you've, uh, that all these rules that you've learned pleased you. Um, we've got appris, because we add the ES to appris, so we can even hear it in that situation. Beautiful. But we'll leave it there. Merci beaucoup. À la prochaine. And happy coffee breaking. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radiolingua Network. Copyright 2024, Radiolingua Limited. Recording copyright 2024, Radiolingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>